This is a how to paint dirty style, the uh, comic book version of the Incredible Hulk from Marvel Crisis Protocol, the miniature game. Um, I start with um, a very light green color from um, Game Air, the uh, Vallejo colors. Um, I apply a very quick, ugly <laughs> coat um, over the entirety of 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 the Hulk model, you know, then I come back through and I apply a second coat of it and then let it dry. And then inevitably I come back again and apply a third coat. Now this third coat will apply pretty good green consistency that I want. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to apply this, uh, very, I think it's bruised purple, um, from privateer presses color line. And, um, I'll apply it on there because it's got a really strong, rich purple color to it. And uh, I'll let it dry and apply it a couple of times as well uh, to get as much saturation as I possibly can. Um, while I'm letting that dry, I come back through and apply some uh, terracotta from Vallejo as well uh, on the bricks on the base. It makes a very good brick color. Um, and then one of my favorite colors... Uh, which is from uh, uh, Army Painter, is their Demon Yellow. And I use it for a lot of the um, yellows that I use on my bases, uh, especially for street yellows. Um, very good color. Um, and then for the manhole, um, I'm using, I believe, an Adamantium Black uh, from uh, Reaper's line of miniature paints. It applies pretty good. Um, then some GW paints that I use for a lot of my grays, concrete colors. Um, I think that might be Astra, Astra Gray, Astra Militarum Gray. I'm not 100% positive. I can't remember now. But I think that's what it is. Or Celestial, Celestial Gray. Um, and for his hair, I, I didn't really have a lot of good options. Unfortunately, my dark greens, I'm kind of out on. So I came back through with Calibite Green from a GW color. And, um, you know, once you start applying the black to it anyways, it's you'll lose most of the, the green in there. And you'll see more black than green. Well, at least that's what I hope. And then, of course, I'm using um, uh, Abaddon Black from the GW line. I like I like their black, and now it's time to line the figure. Um, most of the areas that I'm lining uh, is obviously going to be the muscle the muscle lining area. Um, I want it to pop and define the muscles, um, you know. Plus, give it that very strong comic book feel. So you'll see a lot of lining in the chest area and. And um, a lot of hatch lines. Uh, I like a lot of hatch lines. And especially on this Hulk, the hatch lines end up making him look like, if you're familiar with illustrators, um, Ed McGinnis. Um, it'll kind of have that a little bit of that Ed McGinnis feel. Um, but those hatch lines, I think, really help bring it out to look more like a comic book than it does, you know, just a painted miniature. And the great thing about it is, is that, you know, applying the lines and everything, you don't really need a whole lot of um, varying colors. I mean, this is, uh, I, I pride myself on being able to find the easiest, cheapest way of painting a miniature without taking a lot of time. Overall, um, this miniature took about an hour and 40 minutes to paint, and that's with me filming and having to stop and, and restart, you know, when I start a new little section here and there. I tried to video as much as I could because I didn't know how much I was actually going to use. Um, but, you know, a lot of it is lining the edges, lining the deep recesses, um, what would be kind of like the shadows, and then creating some of the shadows ourselves. Um, I would, if you're, if you don't have an illustrator background, um, or an illustration background, rather, um, then maybe 
you know, use comic books as a reference. Here I'm applying some vein colors uh, to make that vein pop out that's running across the arm. So you don't want you don't want it to be completely solid because then it'll look a little bit odd to have a solid vein. And even in illustration, you wouldn't draw a solid vein like that. Now McGinnis does sometimes. He he applies those big popping veins, but you know, most of the time you wouldn't draw the whole thing in. Again, we're applying a lot more hatching as we're going over the back muscles, and he's going to have a lot of back muscles. So a lot of hatching will just help, you know, accentuate that, uh, those rippling muscles that are running down the back of, of the Hulk. And as you can see, he's really starting to come together um, and really haven't done a lot of work to him. There's no gradients or shading or anything else like that. I just kind of allowed the the colors that I'm using, which are a lot of air colors or a lot of really wet paint, um, to just kind of create the semi-natural gradients that are going to happen, um, unless you just keep applying it until it's completely flat. Um, but you won't see a lot of that discoloration, because normally if you're looking at it, you don't really want that discoloration when you're painting a miniature normally. Um, you want it to you want it to look like it's very well blended and going into the next colors and, and you know but with this it's almost like the exact opposite mindset you don't you don't really care because you're going you're going to really make all of your shadows and make all of your pronounced lines with black um or reverse color you know if you have very dark colors a reverse color will work like if you're playing on black then you obviously want to do probably very light gray or even white. Um, uh, one of the Black Panthers that I painted, um, I used uh, a gloss white for his for his highlights um, and, and his edges in order to give him that illustrated look because a lot of times in comic books when you're using those dark colors, um, you'll have a white color highlighting the edges and the outlines. And that's really what you're doing here is drawing the muscle texture in and, you know, kind of making it, trying to make it pop, really. Um, you can see here we're trying to work on his legs now and get, get it consistent with his upper body. I want to make sure that it stays the same. I want to make sure that, you know, there's all those really hard, crisp lines and I would recommend people not using pen um, to, to do these lines. And the reason is, is because you're going to get a lot more variance with a brush. Just like within inking in the comic book industry, if you're, if you're inking, you know, some people will use pen. But when they want those very strong, de de varying degree of, of line widths, um, a tried and true brush... Uh, literally a paintbrush is, is what they'll use. Um, now, I, I recommend doing it, you know, I mean, granted, you know, it may be faster just to use pen and you may have to work a little bit harder in order to create the gradient or the, the line width difference. Um, but I, I wouldn't do it. I'd stick with a brush if at all possible. I mean, as you can see right here, it's already starting to come together quite well. And now we're gonna add in the near finaling touches of the, or final final touches of, of the hair, kind of fix that. Um, I had to come back through and recolor in his ear because I kind of had colored over his ear a little bit. Um, so we end up coming back and um, adjusting that. Now we're on the face. I end up switching out to another brush. The brush that I'm currently using is uh, one that I made uh, um, after one of my older brushes got, you know, uh, very misused. I cut it in half and trimmed it down and just had a few hairs left and now I'm using it as my line tool for, for the faces, mainly for, for uh, Crisis. I haven't really used it for any of the other um, I don't, I don't generally try to do that detail, uh, of line work anymore when it comes to miniature painting. 
most of all the stuff I use is watercolor nowadays. But with this, I wanted to, again, try to create something fast, easy, something I just didn't really have to paint. Um, I used to paint. I used to really be into painting, but I don't know. I just kind of got burned out on it. Rather play, have fun with my friends, that kind of thing. So now I just generally try to create unique ways in order to um, basically come up with something that I can do to speed up the process, make it quicker. So a lot of times I'll use white as the base. I'll use watercolors on top of it. Um, or I use um, a military brown. It's, a, it's kind of a dark brown, not quite black, a little bit lighter than black, but it applies colors on it so well. Um, and it's just a simple Krylon uh, spray paint. And it and it's one of my favorite. It really applies uh, really strong colors on it very well. Um, here we are finishing up the manhole, applying a little bit of Rise of Rust to it. Um, I put some inks on the base as well. And there we are. We got our finished Hulk. Um, not the greatest thing, but tabletop worthy. Looks fun, looks cool. Catches the comic book style like I was wanting. Um, really just kind of happy with it. Like I said, check out Ed McGinnis. You know, that's kind of the inspiration I definitely was going for for the Hulk, trying to oversaturate him with these lines. Again, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe you'll learn something as well. Thanks.